now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, look at that, says Alex, says the Ramble, so it must be me, Alex Bennett, with the Ramble. We go until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Hi, how are you? I uh, I, I was going to run an interview tonight with Bobby Slayton, we'll do that next month, uh, next Tuesday, okay? Uh, I, because as I was ready to come on the air, we got some really terrible news. Um, I mean, listen, we all live this life for a certain amount of time. Some of us shorter, some of us longer, uh, some of us productive, some of us not quite so productive. And when somebody dies who's been very productive and they're not too terribly young, you expect that it's going to happen, but you don't want it to happen. And thus is the case tonight with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, she died today. Uh, we don't know exactly what of, but she had so many things wrong with her that it was one of them was bound to get her eventually. And the one thing about her that I always felt sorry for her. Now, how do you feel sorry for a woman whose life has been so full and so rich? And the reason I felt sorry for her was because she really should have been able to retire a couple of years ago, right? But once Trump came into office, I think she felt she couldn't leave that post vacant because she knew what would fill it. And she wasn't about ready to have that happen. Uh, and so she just kept hanging in there and hanging in there and hanging in there. And she was in and out of hospitals quite often during that time. And really, it would have been nice if she could have just retired, as most of us do as we get older, and, and uh, uh, live her life, her last years, in a certain peace and quiet. But instead, she felt she had to keep doing her job and keep doing her job because she couldn't let that guy put another bad appointment on the Supreme Court. So it is with great sadness that she died and that spot in the Supreme Court is kind of left open. Um, kind of, it is left open. And it has to be filled. And what has gone on this evening, you know, I, I read about this maybe an hour and a half ago. The bulletin came across the uh, the wires. Uh, wires. They're not wires anymore. It's an old saying we used to have in radio. But uh, it came across, and it wasn't within, I think, 10 minutes of her death being announced that Mitch McConnell said, well, we're going to rush through an appointment in the next couple of weeks. We're going to get this through as soon as we possibly can, a new appointment to the Supreme Court. And I thought to myself, you know, how utterly disrespectful. You know, can't you even wait a day or two or wait until the body is technically cold to do that, to say that? But no, he was ready to jump on it immediately because Mitch McConnell is an asshole, all right, plain and simple, because the kind of thing he did tonight as a result of her dying was the act of an absolute, utter, unrepenting asshole. Um, you know, to begin with, let's talk about this for a second. You know, it was Mitch McConnell that under uh, Obama, when Obama was in his last year, he uh, had to find a nominee for the Supreme Court. And I think it's something like, well, I think it was February, if I'm not mistaken. He nominated Merrick Garland. And um, Mitch McConnell was the first one to jump up and say, it's improper for a president in his last year, right, to try to appoint somebody to the Supreme Court. 
and he blocked Merrick Garland's appointment. And Merrick Garland was, would have been a terrific member of the Supreme Court, not because maybe he's a liberal or whatever, because I think he, he was a good jurist, and he understood that you go by the law, you don't go by personal opinion. But anyway, be that as it may, we will never find out what kind of Supreme Court justice he would have become because he wasn't allowed to become that because they wouldn't even hear his testimony. You know, a few of the senators uh, met with him, but basically they said, hey, uh, uh, you know, it's improper, because somewhere back in the Reagan administration, somebody had said, I think it was maybe like Newt Gingrich or somebody like that said, you don't put a person, you don't uh, put a nominee in front of the Senate in the last year that a guy might be president of the United States, okay? And uh, so faced with that, Mitch McConnell was asked, well, what about that? And he said, oh, that was different. You know how it was different, according to him? Because you had a Democratic Senate at the time and a Democratic president. That's what made it different. <laughs> it, made, it only made it different because there wasn't a way the Republicans were going to get who they wanted in there. So consequently, a, a, a person was not appointed to the Supreme Court until this jerk became president of the United States. But what um, just amazed me was that, uh, I mean, the body hasn't even gotten cold yet. And Mitch McConnell was in there. Moscow Mitch was in there immediately. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. We, we're absolutely, we're going to get him through. We're going to push him through. You know, we only have, what is it, 46 days, 45 days till the election. You know, you could wait till then. You know, you could. And Joe Biden tonight, in reply to Mitch McConnell, said, listen, I think that it should just be held back for whoever becomes president the next president. You know, he wasn't saying that he was going to become president and he was going to be able to uh, um, uh, appoint him, but that, you know, that whoever wins should be the person who appoints them, but not now, okay? Not at this moment, okay? So that was the, uh, that was the, that was the sum total of what was going on tonight. And, uh, you know, I mean, Let's have a funeral, huh? Let's have the people saying wonderful things about this woman who uh, was a great jurist and a great person. And her life was spent in the service especially of the furtherance of women's issues. Uh, and uh, she did them for years, uh, on a, many times a voluntary basis. Uh, she was a great woman. And it's time now for us to honor her and for people to make statements about her. I bet we won't hear a word from Trump. Uh, and if we do, it's going to be so self-serving, it'll be ridiculous. Um, you know, but uh, it, she, it, was, it was a sad passing. And uh, it should be allowed, we should allow, be allowed to have our days of mourning before we suddenly start picking the bones of what's left of this great jurist. Um, and yet Mitch McConnell's ready to pick the bones. Boom, right there, right there. Well, listen, oh, the reason I didn't play an interview tonight uh, was because I wanted to get into this because I know that you want to talk about it, and I have a couple of people waiting on the, in the waiting room on Zoom, so let me move them into the non-waiting room, which is the actual uh, thing itself here. And we've got, uh, first of all, somebody that I really want to talk to tonight because he he's an expert on the Supreme Court. Uh, and oh, Wait a minute. T Tom, have you got your audio on there? Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Uh, Josh Wheeler, uh, who is a big Supreme Court. What, what, what be, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think what the word would be, but he's always, you've always been a scholar of that particular area of our government. And Tommy Amacucci doesn't call us that often, but it's good to see you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Looks okay. like it looks like you've got it looks like you've got COVID hair. Yeah, I got COVID uh, hair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't have COVID hair because my we went out and got one of those clippers 
and it doesn't take much to give me a haircut. Okay, it doesn't take much <laughs> no. skill. Um, yeah. But uh, Robert Natali is joining us. Uh, first, I, I just want to ask uh, Josh what you feel about this. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I feel terrible that Justice Ginsburg passed away. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I think she was a reliable justice yeah. over the years. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, all the fairness of, to all people. I mean, you know, she served great so you know terribly sad that she passed away and i mean i don't think you know, but, i don't think we're surprised she has not been in good no, health right yeah. i mean I, I guess it was a little sudden in that you know you hadn't really heard about her being you know imminently hospitalized or anything like that uh, my understanding is she made an appearance over the internet for the national constitution center just last night wow uh, and did a did a uh, something like what we're doing here for the National Constitution Center, who she was a good partner of for many years, uh, this time last night. Um, so, you know, then less than 24 hours later, she was dead. So it was a little sudden in that. Um, so, you know, I'm terribly sad about that. But I think what I'm more sad about is is the events that are going to follow, you know, her death. And, and I think we all know the, the, the travesty of you know due process and law that's about to happen here um it, it's and it's it's going to be turned into a, a circus what i guess what i guess was pretty vexing I mean, that what was pretty vexing to me and you heard me state it was that the body isn't even cold yet oh i don't you i know. don't know if the funeral home has even picked up her body yeah and there yeah. is a statement out that says <clears throat> will, you know, basically vote on a justice <laughs> tomorrow or whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Mitch McConnell yeah, couldn't right. wait 10 minutes yeah. until he made a comment about it. And, uh, you know... Right. Uh, Neither did Ted Cruz. Th what, did, what did Ted Cruz say? I haven't been f following everything. He pretty much pretty much said the same thing, that he's following uh, Mitch Mitch's lead. No, oh, really? Wasn't he one of the ones that a few days ago when the president made a list of the people that he might uh, offer up as a Supreme Court justice? Wasn't, oh, that's right. Was, I think he was, was yeah. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Ted Cruz one of them? He was on the list. Yeah. That's probably why. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I just don't understand, you know, it just uh, uh, let's say that this were a democratic uh year okay uh, we were we had a democratic president we had a democratic oh, yeah. whatever it, you know i would still say wait you know there's a period of time you should wait and actually you know if the, if mitch mcconnell felt uh, about four years ago or five years ago that obama shouldn't appoint anybody in his last year in office then it should apply to donald trump as well Especially in this case, I mean, we're we're talking what forty five days, something like that. So they all yeah. ought to get together and draft a nice little letter, like they did for Garland. I mean, that's yeah. We would if we were in power, but Republicans are in power. Yeah, I mean, that's barely enough time to even conduct a real hearing, or I'm sorry, a real confirmation process. Historically, I mean, that's that's barely enough time. And if it goes past the election, then you're basically handing it to what amounts to a lame duck Congress, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I mean, and that, 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 that's totally unheard of and uncalled for. I mean, you know, that, that is a, that's a, a true, uh, I'm trying to, you know, uh, betrayal of democracy, you know, first of all, but I mean, I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, 45 days is not long enough, especially when a lot of the people that are involved are busy anyway, running for re-election. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. How much time can they really dedicate to something as serious as that? And for many of those senators, it is the most serious thing that they will ever do other than maybe vote to go to war. Declare war. No. I, I mean, so... Really? I mean, the, the, the highest constitutional duty that they could have 
And you want to try to condense that down into 45 days while they're all also running for reelection, which mm-hmm. takes a great deal of time to begin with. I mean, that's, you know, that's a joke. I mean, and that was a lot of the argument that was used in the nine month deal. You know, I mean, it, it's but it's it, but it's going to happen. I'm telling you. But, it, but isn't it terrible that we are sitting here even discussing this? Yes. Yeah. Discuss, and, and I mean, the woman. I just got the news an hour and a half ago. Yeah, right. I know. I, I mean, I. What we should be talking I sent about that? Maybe 45 seconds after it happened. You went, oh my God, her. what's happened here? Is what you wrote something to that effect? You know? Yeah. I mean, so. But I I, I know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, Susan Collins is going to be. She's going to be very concerned and, uh, you know, this is very troubling and, and then vote for it. And Rand Paul <laughs> is going to say, you know, I, I don't I don't know if this is something that the, I really wish the president wouldn't push something like this. And I'm, I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. Uh, my vote is yay. And Mitt Romney is going to say, well, you know, I, I, you know, this really is kind of outside of our norms. And uh, I'm not sure I really like my vote is yay. And uh, I mean, there's going to be four or five others, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're or are they actually going to stand up and act like men for once in their life? They're I mean, already setting or it women, up right whatever. Now. But you know, I mean, but but they're not because they're all a bunch of fucking little sissy pants, fucking dick suckers. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, they just. Well, I mean, please, please, please. Right wait a minute. Now. First of all, I I really want to call you on one thing, Josh. There's nothing wrong with a dick sucker. <laughs> All right, so I just want to make that a, a, a known fact, okay? And except when the dick is Donald Trump's. Well, yeah. well, the, the problem with that is not Don, not uh, the sucking of the dick, but the fact that somebody can muster up the courage to suck that dick. Uh, I mean, thank you. you. Know, this show will not be monetized take, tonight. Anyway. You, know, you take a guy like Rand Paul or somebody like that, and I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, and he says, oh, my God, this is outstanding. I'm going to be on TV a lot now for, like, two weeks. Yeah. You know? I mean... Be, I mean well, they're, be, they're already setting it up. They're, and they're, blaming, they're blaming everybody, and they're blaming the Democrats, and they're saying they're saying that, oh, the, you know, the, the, the election's already going to be contested. we got to get somebody in there now because there's going to be a contestant. There's not going to be enough judges. It's going to be a 4-4 court. So they're making a big deal about it, and look at the Democrats. They're making this. They've already said that they're not gonna, they're not gonna believe the election. Well, Trump's been saying that for six months, almost a year now, and now they're saying that the Democrats are the ones that are saying it, and they're gonna contest the election. They're not gonna have a full court. They're already setting it up. They're hypocrites. The Republicans. Yeah, are they're they're turning hypocrites. the shit around. Robert, do you want to say something? I I think Josh did a magnificent job of expressing what I was thinking, except for one thing. I, I want to publicly admit to feeling a sense of shame that for the longest time I've been rooting for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to stay alive, not because she was a, a wonderful human being that I should have respected and did, but because of her position politically. And for that, when I first learned of her passing, I felt horribly ashamed. Well, really you, know, you know, I feel yeah. so, I feel sorry for her because she had to spend the last few years of her life staying alive, so this jerk couldn't put another person in her place. No, yes, Tom. I mean, and yeah. that was her wish was to not to make it through this election. Yeah, her wish was to make it through the election so she didn't have to get replaced by him. What, Tom, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I actually uh, want to take issue with that regarding, you know, her uh, desire to to retire. I actually believe she didn't want to retire. I think that she really felt that, you know, as Josh was saying, she was she was, uh, you know, in public and and talking and and, uh, she felt that as long as her mind was alert and she could do her job, she wanted to do it. Uh, One of the things that I was thinking of is. um, uh, here in Berkeley, we had a, uh, a Catholic priest uh, named Bill Do- O'Donnell, and uh, he was, very, you know, he was like our, our version of, of, uh, of uh, Pope Francis. He was very activist, very politically active, very progressive, you know, you know, like like maybe the, the radical priest that uh, Paul Simon used to sing about. Because among the things that he used to do also was uh, support the farm workers and, and Cesar Chavez in the Central Valley. But... Uh, when he died, 
uh, he died at his computer writing a sermon. And I just thought, that's what he really wanted. He wanted yeah. to die doing what he loved to do. And I think that's the same case oh, oh, well, I think, with, uh, with, yeah. with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, you may, be, well. you may be w very well be right, Tom. What I was saying, though, was if she wanted to take a few last years to take it easy and to enjoy what years she had left, also, you got to remember, she was going through a lot of medical problems, and yeah, yet she was yeah, forcing. She did die of pancreatic cancer. Yeah, she, she was, did die of pancreatic cancer. She, well, I, uh, what what did Ronnie tell me that if you have pancreatic cancer, even if they put it in remission completely, and then you get cancer somewhere else in your body, they attribute mm -hmm. it to the pancreatic cancer. Okay, but the, the point I was going to make is. That, that she should have been allowed to make that choice. I feel she didn't ha wasn't able to make that choice. She had to, she had to soldier through all of her illnesses and everything and not make it seem like she was had the inability to do her job. I mean, it, it, I, yes, I think she had a love for that job, but I also think she had a complete disdain for the man who was going to name her, her replacement. Uh, uh, Josh, you had your hand up there. You're gonna say something? Oh, no, I didn't have my hand up, but, uh, well, uh, you know, I mean, I, it, it'll sound a little bit insensitive, I, I mean, but she probably should have more seriously thought about retiring during the Obama presidency when they had a chance to replace her the way that they wanted to before, you know, the Republicans took over, and, and, and she was approached and didn't want to go, and she was warned that this would be the scenario. I, I mean... It's 50-50 because, you know, when you love what you do and everything, you know, who should push you away? I mean, and then on the other hand, you know, being one of nine Supreme Court justices is not the same as, you know, I really like being a carpenter or whatever. I mean, it, you know, it's a little, di you know, it's the same but different. So, I mean, it's, but fuck that. It is what it is, you know. I mean, you know, she served and we, I shouldn't, you know, there's nothing negative to say about her. And, and I mean... You know, I mean, it's just sad what's going to happen. I mean, you know, and, I, and I've always been very fair. I mean, look, I, I had a sadness when Justice Scalia died because I always respected him even when I didn't agree with him, you know, because I felt like he interpreted law a certain way and he was very true to it and he was a good intention. He, he saw it. He saw it through. I his... never felt like he was a nefarious man. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I saw I feel the same way. I, I just, but the events that are going to follow are going to be far worse you know, than that. And that's what's going to be terribly sad here. And it's going to just, it's just going to mar the legacy yeah. uh, a, a little bit, maybe. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. I hope uh, eight or nine Republicans is all it would take to stand up and say, you know, Mitch McConnell can bring all the votes to the floor he wants, and we're not doing that, you know? So, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, and hell will freeze over, by the way. Charlie. <laughs> right. Yeah. The only thing about um, Ginsburg retiring and, she would have to have done it in, in Obama's first term because there's no way McConnell would have uh, allowed anybody. He, he just made up that shit about not not, not uh, appointing anybody the last year. He would have said the last two no, years, that, the last, that, three that, years, but, the last that, four years. That uh, idea was pushed forward, I think, by uh, what's his name? Uh, I had the name earlier. Uh, uh, the Republican uh, um, Senator, oh, what's it? Well, anyway, it was it was it was it was proffered a few years earlier by uh, it was the guy that I had on my show. What's his name? Uh, oh God, I'm losing it. I, you know, uh, Lindsey Graham? No, not Lindsey Graham. Gingrich. Uh, Gingrich. Gingrich. Gingrich is the guy who put that idea forward. And then yeah. McConnell said, "Well, oh well, this is the way it's been considered to be." Blah blah blah. blah. No, there was never. There's no law that way. No, there's no that, law. No. There's no precedent. Ruling, no nothing. 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 He made that up yeah. by a whole clock. I noticed that Jeff had his hand up. Jeff, turn on your uh, turn on your mic, Jeff. Always got to remind him. Uh, there you go. No, now it's off again, Jeff. <laughs> there you go. Danka. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I heard that her daughter said. That, that the judge had suggested to her daughter that that the way she would like her life to go 
is that whoever the next president is, it should be their decision. Yeah. To decide whether or not she's going to retire and whether or not who's going to replace her. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, you know, if, uh, if Trump does become president again, um, uh, we fully expected that she would be going mm -hmm. at that point. You know, she wasn't going to last for another four years. I'm sorry. Uh, and and uh, that she, uh, uh, th that he would appoint her. Well, I think that's the way it should be. He should only get to appoint her if he becomes president. But they want us to be, you're right, they want a Supreme Court in there now that's overloaded. So if this thing comes to a big contest uh, that has to go to the Supreme Court because, you know, you know Trump's going to sue. He's going to slow the whole process down no matter how badly he loses. But he wants to have that court loaded, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'd like to believe that a court would look at a, at a case on its merits, but that's not the case these days. We don't have, we have, a, our government's been hijacked, okay, plain and simple. It's been hijacked. Look at Bill Barr's actions in the last uh, couple of days. I mean, it's been hijacked. Um, no president should have this kind of power. Only a dictator has this kind of power. And he's assuming that he has the power of a dictator. And, and he'll know it if he gets reelected. Huh? Oh, if he gets reelected, can you imagine how he's going to start acting? It's going to get worse. Oh, it's going to get terrible. It's going to get just horrible. Being joined here in a moment, it's, you'll be able to see him when he pops in. Uh, Brian Neary, and then also Vernon Null uh, is, is none is is here. There he is. There's Vernon. How are you, Vernon? Good evening. Um, what what do you guys think about this whole thing with uh, with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Brian, any thoughts? Vernon, any thoughts? What do you yeah, expect? I, I, I think I think we're fucked. And I'll say I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Being the only member of the panel who's from Kentucky, this is Mitch McConnell is jerking off tonight. He is so happy. Yeah. Because he is the consummate politician. His main goal in going to Congress was to become majority leader of the Senate. He accomplished that. And the second thing he wanted to accomplish was stacking the court with conservatives. Well now it doesn't matter if it's 4-4 because she was one of the four that was offsetting the conservatives. Yeah. So now, right now, it's 5-3. So yeah, even if five, they don't three. fill this position, you know, if they fill the position, then it's 6-3. to three. And guess what? Bye-bye roll. That's their whole there goal. Is, there is a wild card. Bye-bye roll. Yeah, roll v. Wade will yeah. be history. There is a, a wild card in this, and that wild card is the Chief Justice. Um who has been in recent years sometimes voting like you don't expect him to vote, because well, he, he seems that on gay rights. But I mean, yeah, but, but no, but no. he seems to be. If he switches over, that's still five to four. Still five four. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and we'll go back to it. We'll go back to every individual state deciding if abortion is legal or not. And states like California and states like New York, New Jersey, they they will have abortions. But the poor people are fucked. Yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, they said that uh, 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 Trump said, "Well, if I if I don't win if I don't win, there's going to be rioting in the streets." <laughs> well, if he wins, there's going to be rioting in the streets, and I'm going to be one of the people out there doing the rioting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because and, you know, I, Lisa Murkowski tried to come out and say, well, I'm not going to vote before the election. Susan Collins could say the same thing. Cory Gardner could say the same thing. Martha McSally could say the same thing. Well, guess what? If they lose, then they're lame duck. They're going to say, yeah, that's our that's our parting shot. What yeah. we're going to have if Trump loses and uh, the Senate goes to the Democrats is you're going to have a bunch of people in government who want to get even before they leave. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to be really ugly. The only Somebody today said the only time we're going to have a sigh of relief is if uh, January 21st comes and we're, it's done, you know. But I don't know that it's going to be done by January 21st. You know, I think Pelosi's going to wind up being president. 
<laughs> no, that's not true, Alex. It, it, it becomes a contested election. <clears throat> if the if the if nobody gets 270 votes, it becomes a contested election. And Josh can back me up on this. Uh -huh. It becomes a contested election. Now, a contested election goes to the House of Representatives, in which case every state gets one vote. But but, but right now, but 26 out of the 50 states lean conservative. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is Trump filing suit to pre uh, to prevent uh, uh, Biden, say, from taking office which then would make it so that there's nobody to inaugurate yeah. on January 20th, and if there's nobody to inaugurate, then she becomes president, at least, I guess, temporarily until the... But that's only temporary, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, and, 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 and that's also only true if all the votes are counted and nobody gets to 270 votes. If all the votes are not counted, it does not go to the House until all the yeah. votes are counted. No, no. If it's a contested election, a contested election means nobody gets 270. It doesn't matter if all electoral uh, college members have been selected or not. It doesn't matter. Oh, boy. I don't think that's true. I read up on it. I read up on it. I think Josh will back me up on that, too. Tom, do you think it's going to be ugly? Well, I hope not. Um one thing, the one way to keep it from getting ugly is everybody get out and vote as early as possible. And and I, I keep saying over and over again, even us in, in, in the so-called safe states like California and New York, we need to make this a landslide. We need yeah. to make it absolutely clear. Yeah. Uh, and I really like the way uh, uh, Amy uh, uh, put it the other night on, on last night, actually, on Jack's show. Um, and that is, you know, we have two candidates and you're either going to uh, vote actively for one or you're going to be voting passively for the other. And we just can't we just have to get out and vote for Biden in big, big numbers. And that's all we can do right now. Uh, and that's all I'm focused on doing is, is getting out that vote. And then, we'll, you know, you know. That they have to worry about those things when they come, but uh, that's the main thing we well, got to do now. <clears throat> I was worried about um, I was worried about uh, Biden uh, when he was you know running in the primaries because you know I I didn't think of him as a very strong candidate, but uh, I have to kind of take that back now. He's turning out to be much stronger much stronger candidate than I ever imagined he would. I mean his speeches are good; they're solid. They make their point, you know. Uh, he doesn't really embarrass me. Where they get this idea that he has all these gaffes, I mean, come on. Uh, uh, well, a lot of them, a lot of them turned out to be his his uh, his stutter, yeah, and I yeah, didn't realize right. it until I started reading about it. a lot of it. And so I feel bad about all the times I've I've sort of dismissed him as 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 prone to gaffes, but but. One thing that that actually makes him a really, really strong candidate is his empathy. I mean, yeah. it's a sharp contrast between yeah. between Donald Trump, Donald Trump, who totally, totally lacks empathy. And here you have a man who's really genuine. He really cares. He's really focused on uh, on caring for people. I've always and that felt that. Showing about clearly in this election. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Robert, did you hand up? Did anyone hear him speak tonight in Minnesota? It, I wish, I, I wish the entire. Didn't you, Vernon, come away with the idea? I wish the entire nation could have heard him tonight, because yeah. he 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 crossed the podium and really engaged with the people and made you know it's just common sense. I thought he was marvelous tonight. I almost wanted to stand mm. and applaud. The he one, the one, the one area guy. that he attacked, the one area he attacked tonight, uh, Robert, that I think is a good strategy, is the one thing that that is Trump's favor right now in most of the polling, and that's handling of the economy. Economy, yes. Yeah. So he throws it up. This election's about Scranton versus Park Avenue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You know? Yes. So he says. He forward. says. You know. He, they're trying to accuse us of being the the liberal elites. Well, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, and he blew it. <laughs> that, I, he did that yes. a couple nights ago too. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's a good strategy. Yeah. Um, I, I thought the speech he gave today that I saw him give, which is, I think, that one you're referring to, yeah. He, yeah. I, I said he's doing a good job. He's making his case, you know, and he's making a case for the fact that if you want to talk about elites, come on. Nobody's more elite than Donald Trump. He's playing yeah, to a base. Who needs he, a gold-plated toilet? He, he wouldn't, he's playing to a base he wouldn't sit down for lunch with. He you called know. them disgusting people. Well, he he, it's claimed, okay? You know, we can, all those things I want to believe, okay? But it's claimed, all right? So let's, let's, let, let's not make it as though it's necessarily let's true. Let's put it this way. It's in character. Yeah, it fits his oh, character perfectly. Oh, perfect. you, you believe entirely that, the, he's, that he's capable of that. Hi, Tony. How you doing? Pretty good. It's... I tell you, it's it's one big shitstorm. I think, I think I was listening. I think Tom is right. I, if he wins Trump, then I think you got to you got to fix the election. I think it's going to be a landslide. There's too much unrest for him to win. And it's well, early, you know, all, all I'm saying is is that we we don't know how he's tinkering with it. Okay, remember I said this earlier tonight, and I'm going to say it again: is that I really feel that our democracy is being hijacked. It's being hijacked. Bill Barr is a perfect example of hijacking. Yep. Yes, Tom. Well, let me just clarify what I said for, for Tony, and that is, I said we need to. I don't think, I, I wasn't saying it's guaranteed. In fact, actually, well, we have to look at it. You know, the right uh, wing voters have always been motivated by the, the Supreme Court. That's the reason why uh, Trump has released his list. He list in 2016. He's released another one this just a week ago, because his voters are motivated. And I was when I was calling for Hillary Clinton, I was just totally, totally shocked at how many people I was talking to really didn't care about the election, didn't care about about the Supreme Court. I said you should be caring, especially when I'm talking to a, a young woman and talking about her, her uh, the future of her ability to, to make decisions about her own body. We need to really get our side as motivated to vote on uh, the Supreme Court as as the right wing has motivated their side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, I think there's a motivation. I think, that, let me put it this way. It isn't that there are people who are really hot for Biden, okay? But there are enough people out there who hate Trump, and they just want to prevent another Trump presidency. And their vote is not going to be pro-Biden, it's going to be anti-Trump. Uh, that's me. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to put him in office. Yeah, I mean, I can go into that voting booth, and good conscience, I can vote for Biden, okay? I, I think that what I've seen him do in the last couple of weeks and the speech he gave today, I can vote for that guy, you know, without feeling that I'm throwing my vote away. Yes, uh, Brian. He keeps saying that, you know, he he saw everything going on and then that's what made him want to run. Mm -hmm. And I mean, do you think that they he's also doing that, thinking people are going to reminisce about Obama and then sort of see that that administration back and bring him back to those those kind of times hmm. only hope yeah to yeah. a point yeah but uh anyway you know it's it it's uh it's it's interesting by the way is there anybody out there who disagrees with us you know what, what happens is i wish we had somebody well I, you know when we get patrick <laughs> in here sometimes we have that that other voice which i like and i appreciate patrick's other voice it's it's uh it's welcomed here <laughs> Uh, 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 but if you're if you're on on the right, if you're somebody who thinks Trump's a good idea, you know we're, we'll let you say your piece, and I make sure these guys don't beat up on you, even though they probably would want to. Uh, but uh, uh, I believe in fairness on this program, and so I would like to see. You know, I don't want this to be MSNBC, okay, where everybody's agreeing on oh, let's dump Trump, let's dump Trump. Mm -hmm. I mean, once in a while, I'd like to see them talk to somebody who disagrees with them, but uh, we don't seem to get that. And the same thing's true with Fox, you know. And what happens is we all go into these little pockets 
and we live in this world <clears throat> that caters to our uh, our feelings. And I was thinking of going over and just watching nothing but Fox for about a week and just <laughs> immerse myself in that world and see if I can understand what that side feels. See if your brain doesn't turn to mush. My <laughs> doctor advised against it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can only stand about 10 minutes of it, and then I freak out. It's yeah. Fucking yeah. Bullshit. Okay. Well, anyway, all you have to do is go over to gabnet.net and... Over on the right-hand side of the page, just mm. click here for Zoom. You just click there, and it'll immediately put you on here. So uh, please uh, do that. I was going to yes. ask you something. Yes, Tony. Maybe you know, years ago, you see, you're mentioning Fox, right? And and I forgot who the news reporter was. See, they're just doing political to me satire. They're only saying that because they're getting paid. Of course. Yes. So here's a question. What was, Do you remember that old reporter, Alex, who was on Hannity, and he said, you know, you're dangerous to, to the country? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because he, he wants to be, t- it was okay. Yeah, was it? Because how did he want to be taken so seriously? What he was really saying to him is, "Listen, Sean, if you got fired from this station today and got hired by MSNBC, MSNBC, he'd be spinning the wheel for them. He's just there for that big fat fucking check, and he wants to be taken seriously. Yeah, and that's really what it comes down to. I mean." No one's ever going to respect him as a newsman or any of these people. Well, I don't think, number one, anybody considers Sean Hannity a newsman, okay? I think they consider him a news commentator, you know, uh, 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 but not not a newsman. Uh, he, he doesn't fall into that category, and, and neither for that matter does Tucker Carlson or who else they have. Oh, that woman, what's her name? Uh, oh, what was her name? Yeah. I can't even stand to look at those guys. They have that. Carlson Tucker's always got that look on his face, and oh, the eyes coming out. Man, I want to slap him. By the way, OAN. Do you ever watch OAN? Oh, that's, that's the worst. worst. Yeah, but but uh, you, you know the only thing that it doesn't make it the worst. Do you notice there are no there don't seem to be any male anchors on that channel? Yeah, they're all women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're all pretty good looking women. So, yeah. Might as well call it the TNA channel. The TNA yeah, that's, channel, that's, exactly. That's the, Fox MS, channel. that's the playbook from Ra, Roger Ailes. Well, Roger well, Ailes. Oh, Roger yeah. Ailes. MSNBC's getting some hot-looking pundits. So, oh, that, yeah. that one, Alexi McClendon, she's hot. Where is it? Who's it? Where's this? She, she's on MSNBC. She comes on every now and again. She's, yeah. she's got like she's hot. Her name's Alexi McClendon or something. I think she's a reporter for Vox or yeah or something. something oh no, like uh, something like Paul that. Publica. Yeah. Axios, yeah. is that the, Axios? That's it. That's it's Axios. Axios. Yeah, every time, every time I watch her, her name now, is a McClendon. It's something else, but I know who you're McCammon. talking about. McCammon. Yes, yeah, McCammon. She, and she has the big glasses. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. no, no. She's a young. No, she's a young, uh, hot, hot uh, uh, she reporter, and she rem- she reminds me of my adopted daughter. <clears throat> I, t- I swear to God. Oh, really? She's gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. She's okay. really hot. You know, because I saw this one with the big glasses, and I thought she was pretty attractive today. But, That's one, probably. She does wear glasses, some big ones. Sometimes. You know, I think it's wrong of us to, you know, pick yeah. our new pick our news pundits based on whether we can jerk off to them or not. It, you know, it's not Cronk. right. I mean, I watch old news clips of Cronkite, and he's like a real professional. The guy's not sitting there like, Oh, listen, well, today Cronkite think. couldn't even get a job because he didn't look good enough. You know, get Jack off the Cronkite. Ooh, no, you know, I'm, I don't get that. <laughs> I was going to ask you this, though. Like, even like, I'm not going to say his name, but I'll, you know, the guy who used to call in is that how can they sit there? Even Trump people who like Trump say, for whatever reason, I'm not going to knock them. Like this week when he was like saying about the CDC guy, oh, we're going to have it, like he said in a month. And the CDC guy said, no, earliest spring 2021. Oh, I think he's wrong. How can they even, like, how can you even say, like, Trump has no credit to even say that? And they'll swing it like, well, he's probably right. No, he's Well, you not. know, I, I, I never can quite understand where Trump is coming from because he acts like he has a degree in medicine. Yeah. Like, where's his source that he could say that? Yeah. He, his, he doesn't have a source. I mean, his he, gut? He says, oh, well, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a, uh, uh, vaccine. a vaccine by November 1st. Yeah, bullshit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and what what what's going to be in that? Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, let's see. How many here, here would uh, volunteer to take it? Brian Brian sent me this, which is some hand sanitizer. Maybe they're going to inject this in you. I don't know. 
you know. Um, well, the beautiful you vaccine. Know, yeah. You said, and he also said today, I'm almost positive, he says, we're going to have enough vaccines for the whole country. He's just, you know what he's doing? He's panicking. He must have internal polls, so he's going to spin this shit so they vote for him. I'm telling you, he wants to do that victory speech with the vaccine. I'm, so, sh I'm sure. I don't know what he's being told, okay? Because this sounds to me like a guy who doesn't want bad news so nobody gives it to him, okay? And so he lives in this bubble in which everybody says, oh, you're terrific, and you're going to win this thing, and just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to say keep doing what you're doing because I really think that's hurting you. You know, go ahead. <laughs> or, it's that herd mentality. The yeah, herd yeah. mentality. <laughs> that was the one that I loved this week, the herd mentality. Yeah, people die, you can get it. You'll be all right. Yeah. Either that or he's telling the people, oh, we're going to have a vaccine by November, right? You know, yeah. just like he did. Oh, you can inject the whatever up your ass and all that stuff. You know, he, he says Ooh. that and the people are sort of, well, uh, and then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll have it by then, you know, and walks away. Let me, ask, let, me ask, let me ask Josh something. Josh, you know, we talk about the inevitability of whether they're going to be able to get a Supreme Court justice in there before the election. Is that possible, or is it too? Is the process slow enough that they can't do it that fast? No matter how fast they want to rush it, they can do it if they want to. Yeah, they if can. They do it outside of the process that we normally use. Yeah. I mean, the constitutionally, the, I mean, the president is well within his rights to appoint a justice at eleven thirty in the afternoon on January twentieth before he leaves. I mean, he's still the president of the United States. And then the Senate is directed to, you know, confirm, advise, and okay, consent. Okay, let me... Let, it, it, okay. Advise and consent is whatever they choose it to be. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if he wants to appoint a justice at 1130 and they want to vote at 1145, yeah, that's that. It's done. Yeah, But, you know, I, I mean, I just saw... I just saw a quote from Lindsey Graham that said, this is from, I don't know, some time ago. If you want to use my words against me in the future, yes. says Lindsey Graham, if there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say Lindsey Graham said, let the next president, whoever it might be, make that nomination. Read that quote too. So I guarantee you, on Meet the Press Sunday, he'll say, well, Ah, uh, no, wait a minute. I, no, I, I, I disagree with you on that one, Josh. Only from this standpoint. Lindsey Graham is up for re-election. He's not doing well in his home. It's very close. Um, um, uh, where, where's he from again? He's from South, South Carolina. Carolina. South Carolina. He's not doing very well in South Carolina. It, it, not well for him is it's neck and neck. He's okay. also the chairman I, I, of yeah. the Judiciary Committee. But I think he will take a much more reserved approach to it right now because he doesn't want to we'll lose see. the election. It's just like Susan Collins, I think, is going to take a more measured approach to it as well and try and seem reasonable. Because Has she ever taken any approach? Uh, Has Susan Collins ever once taken an approach? Well, that's a good question. Vernon? I still go back to what I said before. People like Susan Collins, maybe Lindsey Graham will join Lisa Murkowski and say, I'm not going to vote uh, until the election. Well, Lindsey Graham's in a tight race. Susan Collins in a tight race. Cory Gardner is in a tight race. Sally uh, McSally's in a tight race. If they lose on November the 3rd, then it's going to be the final mm -hmm. to yeah. all of us. Yeah, they can they can do a lame duck. and fucking... Lame duck. Yeah. And I don't I don't know what the shortest interval you know in, in in kind of our era is for a, a nominee to confirmation but i'm gonna i'm just gonna say that i don't believe it's any less than 45 days i heard I mean, it was like i heard today uh, uh it was 70 days I, I mean that's probably about the quickest these things are typically two to three months okay yeah you know, in, in my memory, and some of them have dragged on for longer than that for various We purposes. have, we have, uh, what, a month and a half till the election? Yeah, I mean, it, it's approximately 45 days. I, I haven't counted. I mean, yeah. Someone probably yeah. tweeted it or something, but... Plus, I McConnell, McConnell I, I mean, changed the rules. That's, that's pretty fast. I mean, 
And I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not unconstitutional. It's just okay, undemocratic. But they, they have to have hearings. You know, they have to have hearings, right? Mm-hmm. Can they? Can the yeah, that. by the rules of the Senate, they do. You know, constitutionally, yeah. advise and consent is whatever they want, and they have deemed that to be their process. Now, a hearing could be: Is your name so and so? Yes, it is. Well, I vote yay. Adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know. Well, but and, and it, used, it used to require yeah. sixty votes until Mitch McConnell became the majority right. leader, and with Gorsuch, it was a simple majority. Yeah. That's so, what they called the nuclear option. I mean, it, it is not unconstitutional to do it, and it's not it's not impossible. It's just I believe it's undemocratic, and it's certainly outside of the normal process that we have always lived under. And for people who, 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 who don't believe it or don't understand it, I mean, it would not be a situation that our framers would have liked, I can tell you that right now. And if you don't think they would like a, a last-minute appointment, you know, after an election, you know, see Marbury v. Madison. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, which I is, got, you I know, got, so, I mean, check that out. Listen, I mean, this is kind of off to the side of all of this, but I, have you been following this whole thing with uh, Trump and his uh, executive orders regarding TikTok? I mean, bit. I've seen the headlines. Yeah, I, I don't think he's got a lot, uh, 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 power to do something like that either. I've said that a couple weeks. Well, on ago. top I mean, of that, he said, and we want a piece of the action when it's sold. Yeah, another what, thing. What that do you mean? I find this isn't this is particularly this... disturbing. I mean, I can only imagine if Barack Obama had tried to ban a, an app that people have on their smartphone for God's sake, and then twenty minutes later turned around and said, "Oh, but I'll sell it to somebody if you'll give me some of the money." Well, the other one is a Chinese <laughs> okay. uh, 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 app that Marjorie has on her phone because people in her company use it. Uh, it's called uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Yeah. Huh? WeChat. WeChat. And uh, he's t- trying to. He's, that's supposed to stop too. Uh, first of all, I downloaded TikTok today. I never had it on my iPhone, but I went and I downloaded it because I want to see if come Sunday it disappears from my phone. <laughs> I don't think it will. I think no. what he's preventing yeah. is any more it, downloads no, there's, of it. I mean, there's no... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he has the authority for something like that. I mean, he wants you know, I, by the way, I mean, well, I, I would have said the same thing if you know, someone I voted for had signed an executive order. Well, wait, that, we, we no, chat. I mean, Isn't that stifling freedom of speech? Uh, it's, it, yeah, there's a lot of avenues you could go down that I'm uncomfortable with and a lot of people would be uncomfortable with. Yeah. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's just it's not a power that, you know, I see uh, that the executive has. I don't really think there are very many people who do yeah. outside of certain people who believe that the executive can basically do whatever he wants. I mean, hey, look, there are some scholars out there. There are some serious scholars out there who think the executive can do almost anything. I mean, there's there's a guy that a lot of people point to named John Yu, uh, Y-O-O, and, you know, that fucking guy thinks, you know. He's in my neighborhood. (laughs) King is good enough for me, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, know, and he's, he's, he's always in a constant argument. With people like Akil Amar or Lawrence Tribe or those guys, I mean, you know, they don't see eye to eye. So mm-hmm. that's part of our constitutional disagreement. But the mainstream and 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 the regular I- interpreters of this, and I and I, I would dare say the court, uh, regardless, uh, executive power, by the way, is one of those areas where Republican and Democrat doesn't play into as much as you would think when it comes to things like executive power because you know they're all scared of executive power because it's not always a republican and it's not always a democrat you know what's good for one is bad for the other and so and so so well i was led to believe okay as i was growing up that the president of the united states may be the president of the united states but he is not immune from a lot of things and that he doesn't have ultimate power and yet this guy (laughs) believes he does yeah. He yes. believes he can get away with anything. And so far, the Republicans have allowed him to. Jeff? I, I think if he becomes the permanent president. <laughs> the permanent president? He is now. I mean, he's going to want to do it for permanent. But it, let's say he gets 
voters again. He is going to make changes that are absolutely beyond what you guys could figure out ever, right now. I'm afraid of what... If because he, he's a if, nutcase. If he loses, okay, let's say he's... They throw at him the worst loss that anybody's ever taken in the history of the United States, okay? He still has, from the day of the, from election night to the inauguration, to completely fuck this country over. Yeah. And he's he already a bi- has fucked it over. We got 200,000 people dead. <laughs> it, 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 well, right. okay. A case but made. that could double by the end of the year, Tom. Yes, I'm afraid so. But I mean, the thing is, and this is what is absolutely amazing, is, is that he feels mm-hmm. that he can get away with it, and he does, you know. And uh, I just, uh, you know, and there's no, there are no Republicans out there saying, "Wait a minute," you know. To begin with, you're ruining the brand, all right? Yeah. So, you know, you know and like with the TikTok thing, or mm-hmm. even the the appointment deal. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, yeah. the court especially in terms of executive power, the very few times that they've ever ruled on it, mm-hmm. they have tended to be the only check on executive power because Congress just will not do it. I mean, Congress will not reign in the executive. They have not reigned in the executive for at least five or six decades, well, 70 years. Yeah. I mean, you know, tr- certainly since FDR, yeah. through all parties of presidents, I mean, this is not a Republican or Democrat argument, they have not, you know, the rise of the imperial presidency is a, is an entire field of study, you know, that I got involved in for a while. But I mean, the court in that case, you know, with something like TikTok and those kinds of things, I mean, Trump is probably going to lose because I think any president in those, those areas would lose. And, you know, the Republican party mm-hmm. are the ones that complained about such power grabs, you know, just a few years ago. So, yeah. Speaking of a late appointment to the Supreme Court, you know, the Republican Party are the ones that sued the Obama administration for a recess appointment that he made to the National Labor Relations Board in like 2013. And it took a couple years and, and the Obama administration lost in a, in a check on the executive for a late recess appointment to the NLRB. So if they're willing to sue over an appointment to the NLRB that the court agreed with, by the way. Mm -hmm. This late of Mm -hmm. an appointment to the court having some pushback certainly has historical precedent Mm -hmm. in our time and in the way back. Like I said, you know, go see Marbury v. Madison, which all started over a recess appointment, you know, uh, a a very, very late, late deal. Now, it evolved into totally something else, but that's how it got started. So there's precedent there for that. I mean... Um, I'm just sad, like I said at the beginning, that we had to sit around for an hour and talk about this instead of how great a human being, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. Yes. Uh, which is pretty uh, sad. Vernon. I can, uh, I can in one, one side see Josh's point about precedent, but the problem is that it, the National Labor Relations Board serves at the uh, behest of the president. Supreme Court does it. And so somebody suing for a late appointment to the Supreme Court would get thrown out on its ass very quickly. You know, there, there there's a problem I've often felt with the Supreme Court. Uh, and of course, Josh will probably disagree with me on this. But I just think there are no checks and balances against them. You know, I mean, they can pretty much well, Congress. Well, there Congress is, is supposed mean, to be the check on the Supreme Court. I mean, there is. I mean, the and I, and I wasn't saying that anyone would sue for a late appointment to the court. I, I, I didn't mean it like that anyway, at all. What <clears> I meant was Republicans did sue for the NLRB. Mm-hmm. So I guess what I'm demonstrating there is their own historical thinking that moves of that sort are you know, what they labeled as, you know, power grabs and undemocratic. And I would consider an appointment to the NLRB as important, but rather minute compared to the Supreme Court. So if it's good for that, it's good for the court. In my opinion, Uh, like I said, no one would sue. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not something that you can sue over. I just meant that 
you know, I'm pointing out more of their hypocrisy, I guess. Is, who you know, who is point, this going to yeah. do us any good? But uh, uh, getting off, uh, well, still on the subject, but off to the side of the subject. Who uh, uh, appointed Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Was it Clinton? Clinton. 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 So she's been around for quite a while. Ninety three. Yeah. 93 or something wow. like that, 94. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. The other part is that uh, Clinton's wife is the one who kind of recommended that Clinton oh. really ought to interview her. Yeah. And uh, he I, was not that, um, he wasn't, he really didn't have any much knowledge about her. You know, he had met her and things like that, but he never really thought about her. But well, apparently hey, uh, when she came to interview one on one, she she convinced him right right away that she was the right person for that job. Um, uh, Josh, uh, because again, you're the scholar when it comes to the Supreme Court. Uh, how how does she stack up as a as a as a justice? I mean, will she be remembered very positively? Well, I think she will. I mean, I I think she will, and I think. <clears throat> Until someone else comes along, she'll certainly be remembered as the most successful female justice, you know, uh, uh, of all time. I, I mean, Sandra Day O'Connor would have said that, you know, I mean, right. you yeah. know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that she'll be considered, you know, really one of the foremost legal minds of her generation, man or woman, period. Right. But yeah, I mean, she'll go down as a as a highly respected justice for for forever i mean you know i mean the the shit storm that follows her death will not really affect that no you know, of course at not. all of course i mean not. which is good you know i mean you know but it, we're just gonna have to live through it and, and and sit through the circus that's about to follow but as far as the history books go i mean you know i don't think i've ever heard anyone that had anything negative to say about her other than people you know, maybe mm-hmm. with some rhetoric about how liberal she was or maybe something like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean they, can, they can dislike her no. politics, but you can't mm-hmm. dislike her right. as a jurist. Uh, yes, uh, no. uh, Jeff. Well, my, my, wife's, my wife's an attorney, and she says that she is the one lady that she respects beyond any other woman uh, lawyer forever. Mm-hmm. And so she said because she really, even before she was in the Supreme Court, she had already uh, made a tremendous number of changes that affected women. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're talking about what? Forty years ago, I can't remember some. Of the, I can't remember some of the cases she did, but I saw a whole thing right. on her and, and long before she was on the Supreme <clears throat> Court. She had done a lot for women's rights in this country and gotten a lot of precedence. And I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I know that, that women are, are engineers, women run companies, you know, women are uh, trying to vote to become vice president. You know, there's a tremendous number of changes that have happened in our ages, okay? And and she really changed a lot of those things in in legal yeah. approaches. What what uh, you know? I mean, it, it just amazes me though. What is going to go on in the next couple of days? What went on ten minutes after she was dead? Yeah, I mean that's that's a sad sad circumstance. I mean, you know, I. I half expect President Clinton to probably, you know, eulogize her or, or someone like that. And I think that'll be a bright spot in all of it. I mean, if you didn't like President Clinton, yeah, I mean, President Bush can show up and eulogize her. That's fine. I, I'll listen to that. I mean, the only one that he I probably would. Watch. Now, my question is, are we you going to are we going to hear from Trump saying, oh, we've lost a great woman, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah. Yeah, he, he put something out already tonight. He got caught coming off stage in minnesota in an interview yeah where someone told it was a short that, little statement and what he said she was a great lady lived a great life all that you know yeah kind of thing you know i mean chopper talk you know do you think he would have said that if it wasn't an election year it's very possible he wouldn't have yeah 
I mean, I, I was impressed that he even knew who the fuck Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. So. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you know. Well, she's part of that. I mean, that, maybe that should just be the first question of the presidential debate. Can either one of you name the nine justices of the Supreme Court? Either that or the, 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 all nine the, wins. The second question I would like to see <laughs> asked is, what the hell is herd immunity? Yeah, well... Herd, I mean, I what, herd, herd, herd mentality. mentality, excuse me. You know what Trump will say? Person, woman, man, yeah, right. camera, yeah, TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he needed four wives. That'd be funny. <laughs> I forgot the one of them. Yeah, boy. I, I don't know. You know, I mean, I just, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do if this guy gets reelected. I'm sorry. Really? You think he's going to win? I don't think he's going to win. Well, Brie last night felt he was going to win. Boy, he's sure really? I mean, uh, t- uh, Tony, t- uh, excuse me, Patrick, Tony. Patrick felt he was going to win. I can't see it. I, I, I don't think it's close. I really don't. I think that's why he's panicking with all these, with his crazy antics. I think the days are getting closer, and he must know that it's not looking good. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why he's getting lose. Lose. By the way, Bree just wrote on our chat room, and I want to see if anybody agrees with this. Uh, getting boring. What else is going on? <laughs> you, you don't no think, Bree, that this deserves the kind of conversation it's having tonight? Mm-hmm. Really? Aren't, aren't we talking about civet cats? Is that the problem? Yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> talking about... Do uh, it yourself. Yeah, uh, do-it-yourself <laughs> projects. You know, I mean, come on, Bree. What? It's boring? Why? Because you're not here? Uh, no, you we're know. not watching them eat dinner. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, this is That'd to be me, breakfast for him. To me, I I for I was supposed to run an interview at the beginning of the show, and I forwent that because uh, I decided that this was more important than me running me talking to Bobby Slate, and I can run that on Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this took great precedence because this happened just now. You know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm sorry if it's boring for you, but I, it's not boring for me, and it's not boring for these panelists. And uh, That's the reason I, I came have, on, because have, I find this, this, uh, this really interesting. I, I really wanted to participate yeah. in it. And besides, so there, are a lot, there are a lot of people watching this right now, more than usual. So, you know, um, and I'm glad so to have you to here. Voting. I'm glad to have you here, too. Uh, uh, <laughs> So going Tom. back to voting, I think what Tom had to say earlier was was absolutely true. But I think exactly what he was saying is that we all got to get up off our asses mm-hmm. and vote. And earlier the better, really. Yeah, and you need to vote you with know, a plan. I think, I think that's what plan. everybody has to understand is that you know you can sit here and talk about it, but you got to do it and mm-hmm. encourage mm-hmm. other people to do it because if we get in that same lull that we did last time. It's going to happen again. You know what I think happened last time? I want to be very honest about this. I don't know. Tom might disagree with me because he, he was kind I of... I disagree. Oh, okay. Well, then, I, uh, then I'll, I'll just go ahead and say what I was going to say and take yeah, your disagreement into offense. Um, uh, that, that I found... Objection noted. Uh, I found Hillary a very bad <laughs> candidate and a very... And when I say unattractive, I don't mean in the physical sense. I mean as a candidate. Uh, I, I just found that I couldn't really get behind her. Uh, I'd vote for her. You know, I did vote for her, but I couldn't get behind her. I didn't have an enthusiasm. Biden, <coughs> I feel much better about. Yes, Robert, do you see? I'm not sure the Hillary business hasn't been a bit overdone. In my opinion, it comes down to this. An incumbent runs as a referendum on his first term in office. Mm-hmm. Trump didn't have a term in office to run against last time. He was the, well, what the hell candidate in many people's minds. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Now he has four what have you got to lose? Record. Yes. Yep. Yes, and, you're right. You're right, yeah. Robert. Don't, don't forget, Hillary Clinton got three and a half million votes more than Trump. Well, we know so, that. Yeah. You know, uh, he only won He only won because he drew an inside straight on those yeah. uh you know, off the wall states, yeah. barely. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Seventy thousand votes in those three states. Tom has state. his hand up. Tom. All yeah. Together. Well, actually, you know, Alex, I'm I'm not going to totally disagree with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that yeah, that we made a lot of mistakes, and 
Although I have to say, as I said, I worked in her ca on her campaign and did phone banking. And many nights I was in rooms full of women who were so excited by her candidacy. They were really mm -hmm. happy and excited that they of the prospect of having the first woman president. So yeah, we could have probably put up so, someone, someone better. But at the same time, I think that's the reason. One of the, the the problems with that with that election was we did have so few candidates. It was sort of like, uh, yeah. Well, it's her turn. She, it's 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 inevitable. If we had a really contested primary like we did this time, and re remember how long ago people were saying, "Oh, there's too many candidates. We're going to destroy ourselves because there's too many candidates." I think the competition actually made us better. And I think that if there was more competition in the 2016 campaign, I think they, things could have been different as well. Well, I, I don't think she was a particularly good candidate. I felt she, did, she ran a bad game. Uh, the ground game was terrible. That's the reason for the electoral college loss. Uh, I just feel that we didn't have much of a choice back then. I mean... Uh, I know Charlie's going to disagree with this, but even if Bernie had run, he would have had his hat handed to him. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't think that, uh, number one, I don't think Bernie would make a good president. I think stay in the Senate. You get more work done there than you're going to be able to get done in the, uh, in the Oval Office, you know. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like Hillary that much. I didn't feel enthusiastic about voting for her. I feel slightly enthusiastic about Biden because I like him. I think that he has the qualities you need to have in order to be a president and an effective one. And uh, also the competition made him a better candidate. And that let's compare it just compare it to 2008. Even if Imagine, he, he's, even could, if he, if even if he isn't great, okay? If he can just even things out and settle things down and quiet the mood of what's going on, he will have done his job, you know? And get the right people to run the education, Department of Education, and the right people to do this, the right people to do that, and he'll listen. And, and like you guys are saying earlier, you know, the empathy there, you know, he'll understand and, and do the right stuff, not do what he wants like Trump did. Well, don't, don't have Kushner giving you his opinion about stuff. Did you see the opinion that he had about uh, about Cuomo now? When Cuomo was asking for PPE, he said, well, if he'd spend more time on the phone. What, what, what's that, more time on the phone? They're acting like this is, a, you know, this is Trump Tower and they're running a business or <coughs> allegedly running a business. You know, come hey, on. I mean, what, what do you think they're going to people that support him? Well, no, but I mean, there were people dying in New York. You don't yeah. make those kinds of judgments. The only judgment you make is, what can we do to save those people's lives? But there wasn't even one thought about that. No. And, and we, we, believe me, we paid the toll here in New York. Uh, granted, uh, the numbers are down, uh, although I think we had 10 yesterday. We had three to the day before. Uh, our, our, we're down to 0 0.88 uh, uh, percent of infection rate, which is really... Positivity rate? Pos the positivity rate is 0.88. How good is that? We dropped that? below four in Kentucky. Really? Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, if we lost 10 people yesterday, that is still the lowest anywhere in the country. You know. And there's some days Canada doesn't have a single death, by the way. Let me mention mm -hmm. that. Of course, they got a lot of moose up there dying, but, you know... <laughs> uh, but that, you know, go back and look at that, you know. Um, other countries, he talks about other countries. I mean, what, last week I think Italy had five in one day. France had seven or something like that. And we had 1,200. Yep. <clears throat> now, you know, you can say, well, you know, per capita, well, per capita, it's still terrible. Yes. You know, I mean, people are, and it's getting worse, by the way. We just took a, another turn for the worse all of a sudden. Yep. So, how's your mother holding up, Tony? She hasn't got the COVID yet? No, but you know what she wanted just now? You're going to laugh. I had to mute you. Oh, I'm boy. Giving her Here we go. This is, our, this is 
right now, a little levity, folks. A little time out for some levity. She yes, Tony. She saw me in the bedroom watching TV land. What? I, yeah, she was hungry. I'm hungry. I'm not going to make her a sandwich, so I gave her some salami and a plate. She's going to lay on her stomach tonight. But right? what? And we got to go shopping tomorrow for chicken collars because we have golf, but we have no chicken collars in the refrigerator. Chicken what? Chicken collars. We ran oh, out. chicken cutlets. Oh, I didn't understand what you... That's thick yeah. Queen's accent. I didn't understand yeah. cutlets. You don't even know who Ginsburg is if I told her. She wouldn't know who the hell she is. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. He still thinks Kennedy's in office, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alex, yeah. I should mention, you know, Tony and I are actually in the same business. Oh, really? Yeah. We both do home care. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I never leave home, though. Do you leave your house? I leave the house. Yeah, I, I work for friends that, that live in, in their own apartments. Yeah. But uh, basically, that's the work I do as well. Do you get paid? The do you, keep, you get paid it's by very the city? Rewarding. I mean, even though I'm taking care of my mom, Tom, I really would like taking care of people. I have I found well, I have a lot of patients. Ke Kevin's in that business, too. He is uh, uh, authorized to do it. Oh, that's right, well. Kevin. So we're all, all the same biz. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Um, I'm I'm right now. Mom, mom's in rehab Kevin. right now, so I'm off. Oh, mom's yeah, in Kevin, rehab, so you're Kevin. off. I see. Kevin, are you doing IHSS? I'm do just doing just for my mom. Yeah, but you're not in the IHSS program, are you? No, I'm. I'm just a certified through the through a caregiver. Oh, okay. So you're like okay. private. Yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. but but Tony's making a fortune on his on his I mother. Can actually, <laughs> I can't. They give me another patient, but I said that's enough. Come on, how much? I mean, granted, patient? you got to wipe up her poop, but you know, I mean, <laughs> the other day I saw the moon, Alex. Oh, oh no! You know, you oh the God, moon, Tony, you just that. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not quite that far. I'm out. I just I'm able to get into the house. That's all. Uh, yeah, but too bad Bree didn't yeah, stick around for this. Uh, Although when she gets out of rehab, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to go shopping for depends yet, or? My mom's oh, pretty good with that. Oh, yours? Oh. No, yeah, I, I, did. I did. I used to have to go shopping for depends. I remember one time I was in the grocery store. And I had a big old box of them, and some, some oh, nice right? looking chicks looking at, at me and looking in there <laughs> for my mom. You, you, you know what? Since I had this operation, they said that's uh, why well, Amazon one, is good. One of the side effects yeah. of this operation is you have to pee a lot, and sometimes you have this incredible urgency to pee. Mm -hmm. And I do, and I get that every now and then. But I and I, I worry about it like I'm going to go out now. Oh, you do that? And is this? Am I going to get that urgency? And should I buy some Depends at Costco just to have them around in case? And when I go out, it never happens. And when I'm sitting here for two hours or so doing this show, it never happens. After it's over, if I get anywhere near the bathroom, all of a sudden that urge hits. It's called gravity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Better not get them with Marjorie. She'll... Talk you loud all the way to the register. Don't, yeah. don't tell anybody this. Wait a minute, what am I doing this on the air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had a little condition a while back where we had to buy her a box of those things. She wound up oh. not having to use them after a while. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know it, it, sometimes she laughs too hard and she pees her pants. I didn't <laughs> uh, you know. Don't do it. Oh, oh, your wife too, huh? My mom did that. And she's her. like half Marjorie's age, right? I got kids that do that, so I'll, I'll stop yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes. When 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 we first dated, no, you uh, girl. <laughs> yeah, when we first dated, I used to tickle Simon, and he used to pee. He used to get so mad. So I told him, I will never hit you, but I'll tickle you, and that's even worse than hitting him. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what happened. Is she, every time we would go to Costco, you've seen the video, I think, that I used to play yeah. here. <laughs> she would go over to the Depends at Costco, which they have this massive, I mean, their people what must, your, the people who go to Costco must have problems with their bladder because it's the biggest display I've ever seen of Depends. <laughs> and you can buy the big box with like a hundred of them in there in case you really got to pee a lot. And um, anyway. Uh, she always used to do this thing about picking up a box of the Depends thing. Oh, Alex, you forgot your Depends. And she'd say it at the top of her voice so everybody around us would. Be. 
And what size do you need, Alex? What size do you need, Alex? Is there a color you want? <laughs> uh, and 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 the funny part was she was the one who wound up having to use them first. So I felt really good about that, you know. But uh, uh, you know, uh, to to kind of finish this whole thing up, I mean, I I think that we lost a great lady today. It's no yep. surprise. I'm not surprised she's been ill. And plus, I mean, even if she wasn't ill, if I heard about her going at 88, I think 88, how, is that how old? Or 87. 87. 87, I said. Uh, I, I, you know, I would go, okay, you know, I expect that to happen. But, boy, she was a great lady, you know. and uh, Tough she, lady. Huh? And a tough lady. Tough. Tough, too. Um she, uh, you know, she and, and she comported herself well, and she was a, she was just terrific all the way around, you know. And uh, like like Josh says, you know, the circus that's happening right now, nobody's going to be able to recognize all the work she did, you know. Well, the problem is what's happening as these people go away, they're being replaced by less competent people. I can't say. Could you? Would you agree with this, Josh? That the people that. Trump's put on the court are nowhere near as talented or have the ability of the people he, they, he replaced them with? Well, I mean, Ginsburg was certainly, a, you know, a, a top-tier talent. Um, I think Justice Gorsuch is is pretty intelligent. Um, I, I don't have, you know, too much issue there. Uh, that's not to say I, I'll ever agree with everything he ever did. I, I certainly won't, but... Uh, Kavanaugh, I think, is a a pretty pretty low performing individual, yeah. uh, personally yeah. and professionally. But uh, we, Gors Gorsuch, you know, pretty pretty straightforward guy. Um, you know, and so far as a justice, I mean, he hasn't been there that long. So, but you know, nothing, you know, crazy jumps out at me. I mean, they all are going to make opinions that people don't agree with, but. You know, that, that's the issue, though. I mean, you certainly don't trust Trump to make an appointment. You know, and so someone else to keep an eye on is, you know, the my in my local market, you know, the Cincinnati Inquirer, they made sure just now that they tweeted out an op-ed that Rob Portman, the senator from Ohio, wrote for them in 2016 during that fight, in which he said, you absolutely must delay a vote on a SCOTUS nominee when a spirited and partisan presidential campaign is underway. So, you know, that's what he had to say in 2016. Yeah. We'll see what he has to say in about another 20 minutes. Yes, yes, John. Two weeks after the election, uh, the Supreme Court's going to be ruling on uh, the Obamacare thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was a case they'd already heard, I'm sure the... No, <laughs> no, that's, the, um, that's the thing from Chicago where the guy struck it down. So now it's uh, they they could I mean they might delay or whatever I don't know yeah they may delay it yeah also no, at, at, at what point justice. are they going to say well you know you can yell about Obamacare all you want but it has become law and so we you know all they you can strike the whole thing down throw the whole thing I, out I don't know you know a lot How of could they do that uh, members of the Supreme Court aren't always ready to just knock something down that's been yeah. law for a while for a while this hasn't been a long time. But it's like, I don't think you'll find anybody on the Supreme Court who would say it's okay to knock down, you know, shut down Medicare. Because it's just been... Well, but I mean, but, but yeah. what the biggest thing about that is, is they don't, they don't gain or lose from those type of issues or reactions. I mean, none of them are going to get reelected or get not reelected, you know, on those type. It's a job for life. Yeah. So... Striking down that might make some people happy, but it doesn't make them any more money. Or that whole job for or that whole thing like that. That whole job for life thing is something that I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, you know, I say if you want to make it ten years, fifteen years, life. You know, it. it, it by the time you've got uh, a whole court turnover, uh, many generations have passed, and the mood of the country has changed, and all of that. Hey, listen, this has been a great panel of people tonight. Josh, who's our, our, uh, our SCOTUS uh, expert. Uh, Tom, who is a, I think, just a politically savvy human being. And I call us more often, will you? You know? 
And I have to say, you know, your decision to go to Zoom uh, over Skype, I, I really, I'm really enjoying this. This is, uh, this is definitely an improvement over over, uh, over Skype. Skype. Definitely, uh, less problems too. Robert, thank you. Have a nice weekend. You, Kevin, maybe I'll see you tomorrow night because yeah. uh, we get together and we go out and party. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, 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 John. Uh, and um, Larkin and uh, oh Brian oh good night to you too no little one huh mm, too hyper lately she too loves hyper you guys so she's going up <laughs> <laughs> and Vernon thank you for being here Tony thank you hey, we couldn't have uh, Brian's little girl maybe you could have your mother here at the end of the show sometime. <laughs> Anyway, and of course, Charlie Wallace, always a pleasure having you here as well. Uh, thank you all. And why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. There we go. There they go. That's our citizen panel, and a good one tonight. Hope you all enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. Uh, coming up next, uh, it's uh, the intersection with Jack Bishop. He's going to be using Skype. I will see you again on Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday, folks, at uh, 10.30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And be safe out there, and damn it, wear a mask, will ya?